Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Today we are going to discuss a very important topic which is the Atma Karaka. Many times people think Atma Karaka is just simply a benefic planet which means you know anytime Atma Karaka's Dasha comes you, know, you, you, you will be uh, at the top of the world or you will get married or you'll become a billionaire or whatever some Something great and exceptional <clears throat> is going to happen. Uh, but Or sometimes people think if the Atma Karaka is afflicted, then it can uh, bring you to the ground, uh, rags to riches or the opposite, you know, riches to rags. So these are all exaggerations. But the fundamental flaw with all these arguments is not the exaggeration. It's the fact that there is a fundamental misconception about the Atma Karaka in itself. Okay. So now what is the Atma Karaka? So I have different videos on the Atma Karaka. If you have not watched them, please uh, search Exotic Astrology Atma Karaka. You will get a better idea. And as usual, if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it down below. And if you want a consultation from me regarding your career or marriage, then you will find my website also down in the description. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will surely find him irrespective of who is your Atma Karaka. So the Atma Karak, uh, the Naisargic, the natural Atma Karaka is none other than the sun. Because the sun is the significator of uh, the self actually, is the significator of the Atma. Okay. Now, uh, many times people think sun represents the soul. Well, uh, not really. The soul is actually represented by uh, Jupiter. So there are two different things. So one is the Chit. Other one is Chitta. Okay. So Chit is Satchitananda, pure Chit, pure spiritual consciousness, which is Jupiter basically. And then we have Chitta, not Chitta. Chitta is different. Chit, chit, uh, chit is like uh, Jupiter, very, very high. Okay. Then we have Chitta, okay, which actually uh, represents the materialistic consciousness. Okay. The word chit can sometimes, uh, chitta can also refer to the mind sometimes. So basically, the word chitta is uh, referring to who you identify yourself as. So if you think you are a uh, Indian, that's your identity, you are a Hindu or you are a Muslim or you are a software engineer or a business owner or whatever you think, that's your identity. So that's the meaning of the word chitta. Okay, so this this uh, chitta is actually referred uh, to by the sun because the sun represents the self. Whatever we think that we are, or there are certain uh, patterns within ourselves which are very strong, that is actually represented by the sun. Now, what happens is we have the sun as the atma karak in the natural zodiac, Kalpurush Kundli. So this means that irrespective of who your Atma Karaka is, the planet Sun and his placement in the horoscope will always give an idea of who you think yourself to be as. Okay, Not who you are, who you think yourself to be. And then we, uh, of course, have the uh, Atma Karak depending on the uh, highest degree. So whichever planet has the highest degree, that planet is the Atma Karak in the chart. So then what, what exactly is the Atma Karak? Okay. Does it mean the Atma Karak is a benefic or he's a malefic or what, what do you mean when you say you know, this planet is an Atma Karak? So this basically means if a particular planet is your Atma Karak, then those are the thing, the Karakatvas of those uh, of that planet. So for example, if Mercury is your Atma Karak, then it can mean that your previous lifetimes have been revolving around mercurial things and you have uh, identified yourself with those mercurial things which means you uh, you you might be uh, very much attracted to money sometimes you might be very much attracted to wealth uh, not attracted in a negative or derogatory sense that you will cheat people but 
you may also be studying about you know finance about wealth and management and all this okay because that's what mercury represents mercury can show education at times okay so if mercury is your atma kark then education can be uh, something which is you know very important for you you know uh, you, you may identify yourself a lot with education whatever happens in the education sector um, may actually uh, impact you very strongly okay so the atma is identifying itself with mercury you know wealth education and all these things okay so that inherently means that the houses which mercury rules or the uh, houses where mercury has karakatva those houses become very important so if so for you if mercury is your atma karak then it can inherently mean that for you the fourth house and the 10th house is very important because the 10th house is the house of uh, profession name fame power position but the mercurian side of the 10th house can represent skill and the fourth house can always show uh, um, learning knowledge and education okay now this essentially means that planets in the fourth and 10th if you have mercury as uh, your atma karak they have a lot of say in your life okay so this means if you have the fourth lord well placed or the 10th lord or both of them then it is very good for you because you feel that you are in harmony with what you believe you are experiencing what you want to experience okay on the other hand if mercury is your atma karak and you uh, you have the 10th lord in debility or the 4th lord is not well placed or you have natural malefics in the 4th or 10th or maybe in both and if they are functional malefics too then uh, it means you want to experience wealth knowledge education but uh, you can't due to some reason you are experiencing the opposite you are experiencing poverty you are experiencing confusion you are experiencing bad teachers okay so <clears throat> similarly we know for every planet you know there are like uh, there are karakas for different houses right so for example you know we have venus so if venus is your atma karak then it becomes very important to see what is going on uh, in your fourth house and also in your seventh house because these are the two houses which uh, venus has the karakatva of because uh, the fourth house shows luxury okay so if venus is your atma karak you may be very uh very much prone to luxuries okay but does that mean you will have a luxurious life well not necessarily now if you have uh, good planets you know uh, primal lords in the fourth house or in the fifth uh, in the seventh house you know then and there are some raj yogas then you will feel very high fulfillment in this life from venus because venus atma karak means your life has been revolving around venus to some extent to a large extent um, that's how you identify yourself uh, with that's who you identify yourself with so that essentially means uh, that you will uh, identify yourself with luxuries and with the opposite sex marriage and all these things okay or it can be vehicles also okay so that means Uh, if a person has a malefic in the seventh house, so suppose somebody has you know Saturn especially, but the person uh, is not having Venus as Atma Karak, then this Saturn in seventh house may not matter much to the person. He may be like, oh yeah, my married life is not very good, but I'm fine with that. It's okay. Um, especially Saturn or Ketu, if these two planets are there in the seven, then that can create you know a lot of distance between you and your spouse. And uh, but you may be fine with that because that's not what you uh, expect or that's not what you always wanted. Now I'm not saying that uh, you do not want that. Everybody wants a good marriage, but if you do not have that, then it's not like a do or die situation because that is not what your atma identifies with but suppose you have venus as the atma karak and then you have ketu in maybe fourth house or seventh house or you know saturn in fourth or seven uh, seven then it's a very difficult situation because now your atma is identifying with luxuries and marriage and all partnerships but that's not what you are receiving and adding to that if 
uh, Saturn is the Lord of the sixth house or eighth house or the twelfth house, then that's like getting worse. Okay, so and therefore you have to understand uh, through the karakas, uh, through the uh, karakatvas of the planets. You know which houses do they have the karakatva of? Okay, which uh, houses are uh, they impacting? Okay, and the kar the atma karaka also. Atma Karaka's placement in itself is very important. So, for example, you know, if you have Venus as the Atma Karaka, but now your Venus himself is placed in the sixth house. Now, this is a very tricky situation, which, which means that you have uh, experienced the negative side of Venus, which can mean, you know, that you, you can, your mind can be. Uh, you, you might have this fear inside, you know, that, oh, I'll be cheated on by my spouse, you know, I, I'll be discarded, I'll be dejected, okay, so I'll be left off, you know, it's like that leftover feeling because sixth house is twelfth to the Karakatwa of Venus, which is the seventh house, so that can leave you with uh, terrible insecurity and even if other planets are well placed that is something which is always there at the back of your mind okay so now is this we now in general venus in sixth is not good for marriage but now if your venus as the atma karaka is in sixth oh my god that that is a very difficult situation for marriage okay now for profession and creativity that may be good but it depends which aspect of Venus is the Atma Karaka experiencing? Okay. Because Venus in 6000 as the Atma Karaka can be good for profession sometimes. Or maybe bad for both profession and marriage. Okay. So you have to see what's going on in the horoscope. What the Lagna Lord is telling. Because the Lagna Lord uh, will tell you where your energy will go, where you will focus, where you will put your brain into. Lagna is the brain. Okay. So. If you have Venus as the uh, Atma Karak, um, <laughs> but your Lagna Lord is in the sixth house, then this is again another tricky situation where you want luxury and marriage, but somehow life is pushing you towards celibacy. You know, relationships are not working, and that's why you have decided maybe I should remain single. So then this is another problem because then. Um, yeah, the Atma Karaka is not able to experience what it wants to experience, right? So, therefore, uh, you have to see what's going on in the chart. You have to understand what the Atma Karaka is, okay? So, thank you very much once again. And as I said, if you have not watched the videos on Atma Karaka, please watch them. And if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it down below. And if you want a consultation from me, my website will be down below. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will surely find him. Thank you.